my co-anchors in the studio were just talking uh -huh. about the, the updates to the trade yep. war and hopefully we get a phase one trade mm -hmm. deal signed mm -hmm. soon. Looking back at 2019, yep. was that a bigger problem or was, was the violence in the streets the well, bigger Well, of course, we all know that Hong Kong is hit by both. But the, what I described is double cycle. Mm. On the one hand, is U.S.-China trade war, which Hong Kong suffered the collateral damage. Uh, as well, U.S. China are both our major trading partner. Mm. But at the same time, of course, things happening locally do have a bearing on our local economy. But I would say, well, the two combined together, well, Hong Kong has a very tough year uh, in 2018. So looking ahead, I think, well, there's some easing on both fronts. Of course, we're pleased to see sort of a, uh, the um, agreement between U.S. and China on right. the trade deal. But I think the, the real test is when will the tariff be removed? Because otherwise, I think 15 to 25 percent um, toll on trade in goods is not small for any business. Although uh, the tra trading um, between U.S. and China through Hong Kong con constitute, constitute less than 10 percent. But the overall image and the overall sort of uh, economic sort of uh, uh, environment is going to be uh, dictates still by the U.S.-China relations, and Hong right. Kong is in the forefront. Uh, it, has there been anything in the data that you know that's available to your team mm -hmm. that suggests the worst is over? And I guess part of that question as well is: is the mm -hmm. government also operating under the assumption that the economy again contracts in 2020? Now um, we are we are seeing. Well, I, I mentioned this double cycle on the easing of U.S.-China relations. Mm -hmm. Definitely, that will bring uh, a positive sign to the economy because well, that constitutes a much bigger part. Okay. Now, easy indication is 2018, uh, we enjoyed 3% growth for a developed economy like Hong Kong. That was a good year. And then with the click in, clicking in of the trade war, uh, 2019, uh, we are seeing sort of a, uh, the economy before the social unrest happened locally okay. down to almost zero. So you can say, well, in very back of envelope terms, it knocks off a few percentage points. So that's the impact. Of course, the local unrest, uh, we are also seeing some easing of tension uh, with the success uh, conduct of our district council election and with uh, things quite, uh, being quite down uh, in recent weeks. Uh, we are hoping that, yeah, we're hoping mm -hmm. that, well, uh, law and order being restored uh, and also hopefully, well, business confidence comes back. And let's look at, for instance, a form like this, that right. people, major business leaders still sort of come, come back to Hong Kong. So we are hoping that, well, these will be the positive indicators. But of course, there's always a time lag in terms of economic performance. And therefore, 2019, I think, still, we still uh, sort of need to struggle a bit uh, in, in the entire 12 months. And part of your program to help small businesses, mm -hmm. of which, if I'm not mistaken, over 90% of businesses in Hong Kong are small businesses. Oh, yeah, more you're, than 90 you're, you're literally giving them cash. Uh, for some of them, well, we are, yeah, How does it work? Well, I... No. In a way, looking back, we have been acting very swiftly in 2019, partly to address the U.S. China trade war, mm. because our trade constitutes a very major part of Hong Kong. Right. Uh, our GDP, our trade volume is more than three and a half times of our GDP. So very external, externally oriented economy. That's why in preparing for the U.S. China trade war, we help our business by enhancing their cash flow, by sort of carrying on and enhancing a, 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 a banking finance guarantee right. scheme. And we actually roll out a 90% government guarantee scheme for micro SME, where they, they uh, were in need of sort of cash flow. We're also sort of uh, easing their cost of business. For instance, government cutting tax and also sort of uh, exempting certain payments. So this is the typical uh, things that we do at a tough time that we, we, pre we prepare for the worst. And on selected uh, sectors, for instance, retail, tourism, mm. uh, those areas which are hard hit by the uh, sort of uh, drastic reduction in tourists, we need to get, give them a, a, a token a incentive. For instance, I wrote out two schemes focusing on travel industries and also sort of uh, 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 tourist agencies, uh, where we encourage them by giving a sort of uh, cash incentive of $100 per tourist or traveler they, they can bring in so, so that we can tie them over in this very difficult time. So it, yeah, it, it basically allows, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. those businesses to, uh, to offer their products and services at a discount? Well, both. Okay. I think both. Well, of course, uh, uh, well, the price will be set by all these businesses. Right. right. It's a free it's, enterprise. It's, it's, yeah, exactly. Anyway. Market. Okay. But I think uh, small uh, enterprises, particularly the, the micro SME, they are facing a double hit. One is the actual turnout of business, and the other is liquidity. 
That's why the financing scheme is always very, very important. Banks uh, would be uh, happy to support them on right. the assumption there is certain sort of guarantee. And that's why we have recently enhanced the banking sort of financing scheme helping them to sort of uh, tie over this very, very difficult period. Yeah, you know, we're talking during the break. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure many of our viewers would be curious to know this. Was there any point that you and your team, the economic planners, were uh -huh. considering a, a cap on rent? Well, now, government has been setting an example that as landlord, for instance, we do uh, sort of uh, have places where we rent out to business. Okay. Uh, like in, in some government premises, there are restaurants inside. Well, right. for those areas, we have, in fact, the financial secretary has, in fact, given a rent concession, 50% off for six months. Now, government setting example. Of course, Hong Kong, Hong Kong is entirely sort of a market. So the right. rental is set by the landlord uh, with their sort of talent, tenants. And uh, I understand there are a lot of negotiation on uh, and this uh, sort right. of trying period. But of course, rental is not nothing that government can, can set. But we do our part of sort of making certain concession when government is the landlord. But we constitute a smaller part. Right. And based on what you've noticed, have they followed? Are, are, they, are they following? Are they, uh, if, if not lowering, at least keeping rents uh -huh. at, at the current rate? I Well... Of course, in, in, in many of these uh, sort of particular uh, retail sector, right. many of the rental uh, level are being set not just by a fixed value, but by volume of business. So with the rolling of the business, actually landlord gets less. But I understand mm -hmm. that while well, major landlords are also in discussion with a lot of their tenants, right. particularly the good one and long term one that, well, there is a business relationship they want to secure. So it's try to sort of a... Uh, uh, sort of solder the or share out the pain uh, during this difficult time. I think well, both landlord and tenant would would do their their part uh, together. Right. So we every month and more so mm -hmm. recently, we 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 obviously report and we track the unemployment rate of Hong Kong. Which frankly, I had a look at the data. It hasn't really gone up by that much. Mm -hmm. Now I would imagine that does not include people who are underemployed or mm -hmm. people who are still employed, but. You know, forced to take unpaid leave as well. Do we know how many people are actually affected on top of the official rate? You are exactly right. That well, if we look at the unemployment figures, uh, still 3.2 percent, the latest. Almost nothing. Uh, by Hong Kong standard, that's already a dip. Right. And but we need to look uh, further into these figures because within certain sectors, for instance, uh, I mentioned travel, uh, 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 tourism-related sector, hotels are. Uh, having a, a deeper cut, mm. uh, some uh, into a 5 or 6 percent unemployment rate. Underemployment rate is still yet to be fully reflected. But, well, the traditional wisdom is, well, uh, people would look at uh, how business at the year end, and usually, well, for, for Chinese community, they look at the Chinese New Year right. sort of uh, timing. Uh, it, there, there might be some enterprises having the toughest time, they might decide to pack and go, and that would usually be the time. So that's why I said, well, there might be some sort of a time lag in terms of the economic indicators. But I think we are, we are struggling that, well, on the one hand, things on, on the global and also regional perspective are having some, some sort of positive indication as the easing of the tension between the big trading partners. And as economic and planners, that, that time lag, is that six months to you? Is it eight months? Is it some term? I, is it I this believe, year or well, next year? Is what I'm I to believe, get to. well, 2019 will still be a very difficult year. 2020. Uh, 2020, right. I beg okay. pardon. 2020. And I think as reflected by the, the World Bank's latest, hmm. they're projecting globally 2.5%, which is on the, on the low side. Okay. And uh, as uh, reflected in, in the polls, just hmm. held in the AFF forum, I think people are still highly cautious. So I believe, well, if things will, uh, were to be improved, first, U.S. China trade tension would need to be further sort of uh, 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 loosened. And in effect, when will the tariff be cut? I think that will be a huge business cost uh, for, for trading in commodity. And then secondly, I think, well, that would also affect on the sentiment. Of course, there are bigger things to issue, uh, U.S. election, Brexit progress. <laughs> And locally, I think, well, we, we need to work doubly hard for Hong Kong to ride out of the storm, uh, struggling right. with our political, economic and social Because uh, Hong issues. Kong, as you pointed out, is doubly hit. And I, mm -hmm. it, you're correct to also point out as well that on both fronts, things have eased as well. Mm -hmm. In the event that things do worsen, and we don't know which way those things are going to go, uh -huh. uh, the, does the government have more measures in its pocket that it's prepared to roll out fiscally? 
I think well, Hong Kong government never spare any effort in sort of uh, working with our economy, but also with certain constraints. Hong Kong economy, although population is small, 7.4 million, but the economy is much, much bigger than our sort of sheer size, and it's highly external oriented. It's very much market driven. So we have to work hand in hand with the market, and we always respect the market forces. But I believe well, Hong Kong is also having a very high degree of transparency. A huge respect of rule of law, level playing field. I think these are fundamentals. These are very important sort of a consideration for businessmen. Well, when they travel around the world, when they look、right. at the global market, the reason they still hold on to Hong Kong must be those fundamentals that remain strong. Unchanged, and also that's why Hong Kong is resilient. It, it is still a good place to do business. As I, I guess, if you ask any sort of longer-term businessman, he would tell you that、mm-hmm. as well. D- looking back, and hopefully this passes as well. When you look、mm-hmm. back, was there was there any structural crack in the economy that you're looking back now? I should have addressed that. It would have made things more resilient, just for businessmen who look longer term. I think the good thing about Hong Kong is people are very instinct. People see problems and they immediately try to find a way to fix it. Uh, I, I believe well.、Uh, as the last、um, sort of one and a half year, we,、right. we're in suffering both U.S.-China trade war and also the local unrest. I think people are searching for any methods, and there are also a, a market with highly re- resilient. That well, for instance, when you look at farm today, the Asian Financial Farm has been、uh, running for two decades.、Mm. People keep coming back, and we are seeing a lot of this major business event carrying on. I think people come here to see for themselves. And people talk to people who are working,、uh, sort of studying,、uh, doing business here. I think that's those are the strongest potential, and I think well that would help us to bring Edward, ourselves back.